So Muriel, could you introduce yourself and the center to us? So uh, my name is Muriel Estipero. I am from Makazana. Yeah. Um, I am the president of the center and also um, we take therapy sessions for children with autism, ADHD, learning disabilities. I have also completed my autism intervention course from uh, Umid, uh, which is a child development center in Mumbai. Uh, so at the center, we see a lot of um, uh, pediatric cases. Uh, children who have autism who are on the spectrum, autism spectrum. Uh, also we see uh, children with ADHD who are hyperactive, who are, uh, who are having attention deficit. Um, we also have a lot of cases uh, like learning, uh, children with learning disabilities, then global developmental delay and uh, other, uh, other uh, concerns. So I also um, take counseling sessions for children and for adults. Who, who, rec who recommends them to the center, the schools? So or? we have a lot of references coming from uh, different hospitals, uh, from different doctors, from different uh, schools. Uh, like right now we are getting a lot of references from classic hospital. Uh, yeah. I see. And uh, generally what are the signs to look out for in a child? Okay, so if suppose we see a child um, who, are on the, who is on the spectrum, autism spectrum, we see a child who has symptoms like uh, the child will not maintain eye contact. If suppose I call out the child's name, the child will not respond. Or the child might have attention deficit, uh, will have uh, low sitting tolerance and a lot of parents' um, uh, parents' concerns are like the child has speech delay. So the child uh, at the age of uh, 2 years or maybe uh, 3 years, the child is not able to speak words. So that's the main concern of the parents. And over time, is there is there chances that they would recover some of them, or how does it work? See, when we say autism, uh, we do not say that autism has a cure, but definitely, like there are there are a lot of parents who see uh, drastic improvements in the child. Um, also, um, uh, doctors who refer the kids here uh, to the center. Uh, parents go back to the hospital or back to the uh, doctors and they also report that a lot of changes has been seen in the child with respect to speech, with respect to the child's behavior, with respect to the child's attention, academics, etc. So once they come to the center, Muriel, uh, what is the course of action or treatment or...? So uh, once we get a lead from any school or any doctor, I take the first assessment. So I do a psychological assessment uh, keeping the child's uh, developmental milestones in mind, for example, the speech development, then uh, physical, then uh, social, emotional development. So we have checklist like for autism, we have checklist. Uh, then for ADHD also we have checklist. If suppose a child who has some behavioral concerns, then um, we uh, we do a behavior modification for the child. We also have a behavior chart wherein we uh, see uh, like what are the behavioral changes that the child goes through or what are the behavioral modifications modifications that are required for that particular child. At the moment, how well or how badly does Goa treat these kind of children? Do they have infrastructure? Do they have schools? Do they fit in? Or there are special schools? Or how far? How close by? So the thing is that, first of all, there is less awareness among people that there are children who are special needs children. So uh, there are few schools in Goa wherein uh, like uh, there are like special schools in Goa like there is Sanjay school, there is uh, Jod school uh, and there are few private schools which has a uh, resource room. But the awareness among people that my child has any difficulty or has any concern, that awareness among people is very less. So people uh, like parents uh, especially like they do not accept that their child has a difficulty. Plus the schools are far away, it's not necessary that it will be close by. Yeah, even the attitude of teachers is uh, it's not very good when it comes to children with special needs. So you all started when and how many children coming here more or less? So we started um, on 30th of March. I see. Okay, uh, like this year. 23. Yeah, 23. And uh, so far we have around uh, 30 to 40 kids coming to the I center. So they have to attend uh, how often or what is it? So it depends on the on the level of the child. If suppose the child has speech delay, so we will see like the current level of the child and we will tell them like they have to come twice a week or thrice a week. I see. Yes. Some parents they also request us like uh, they want to come every day for sessions. 
I see. Yeah, but uh, what we recommend to them is that like even they need to work at home because only if suppose parents involve themselves in the child's progress, it will help the child. Faster. Yes, faster, faster development. So you all face any issue of crowding or something of that sort? No, it's managed. Yes. Uh, what happens is that like nowadays there are a lot of cases of a uh, lot of children with uh, symptoms of autism and uh, they need to book the uh, appointment in advance. Okay. Uh, like uh, we, we really have like a lot of kids and most of the kids like go to school so they can come only like after okay. like in the afternoon time. So there are a lot of kids and uh, we... Uh, at present, we have like a workload of so many kids, like so many parents wants to come for behavior therapy or occupational therapy. So giving them slots becomes a little difficult as of now. How do people contact you? Phone number or Phone WhatsApp? Phone number, WhatsApp, uh, even through Facebook. Facebook is what? With the name of your page uh, or group? The Healing Center 2023. The Healing Center 2023. Yes. And uh, WhatsApp number? Uh, 9309. 3131 double. 3 also we have another number uh, 7558 2131 double. Double 4. Double 4, yes. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks. So, Utkarsha, tell us about yourself, your background, and the work. So, my name is Utkarsha Gaukar, and I, I'm from Saurden. Yeah. So, I've completed my bachelor's in occupational therapy from Goa Medical College, followed by internship, born, and now I'm working here. Okay, so so in occupational therapy is uh, is a is a degree in occupational yes, therapy. Yes, it's a four year plus uh, six months internship. I see. So wow. complete four and a half years. So so what exactly for us people who don't understand what does occupational therapy mean? Yeah. So in with respect to childrens, like increasing their independence in like their basic activities of daily living, like eating, dressing, then going to toilet bathing so making the child independent in all these things also working on the uh, skills such as some gross motor skills some fine motor skills such as jumping catching and throwing ball then some uh, some hand manipulations teaching the child some uh, strategies to increase the grip of the hand like uh, some helping the child in writing so all these things to me yes, yes, yes. like stimulating that environment here so that the child learns and then the parent has to follow that at home also. How long they have to spend here? Like one hour session it is. One hour yeah. session. How many times a week? So it depends on the case, like how severe it is. So like mostly it is twice or thrice a week. I see. And also we like majorly work on sensory issues. Like these children have difficulty in processing the sensory information. Like processing the light, sound, taste, I smell, I see. some different texture, some touch. So we train the child so that the processing of all these senses become easier. Very interesting. And uh, do children show positive results after yes. going through this? They show like mostly like first two three sessions like we we do like more of a repo building. More of a repo building. building. So that the child becomes comfortable in the environment. And then slowly slowly working on each each problems like how the child depends on like level of the child. Amazing. Yeah. Very. What is the biggest challenge you face? Biggest difficulty or what? Yeah. There is no like biggest challenge as such. But okay. Every child is different. Okay. So ways of handling every child is different. So we have to just look up, look after that. Like how I'm going to approach to this child. I'm going to treat, treat this child. So that's the challenge. So there is no big big challenge as such. Interesting. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. You enjoy your work? Yes. <laughs> All the best. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Amna, could you just introduce yourself and tell us? Uh, my name is Amna Parveen and I'm here for Margaon. Uh, I've completed my bachelor's in Manipal University uh, in the course speech, uh, bachelor's in speech language pathology and audiology. And right now I'm practicing currently at the healing center as a speech therapist. What made you go for such a unusual and, and you know not very common course? Yes, uh, that's the main question I've been asked. Uh, one of the reasons is, as you said, it's very different and uh, it uh, falls in the medical field. So, and uh, it is something what people aren't aware of and uh, helping someone, you know, giving them the basic ability to, you know, function as basic human function, to help them do that, I think, I think that's the greatest gift one can offer. True. But, uh who needs your help and how would you identify? Okay, so uh, let me tell you about my uh, job role. 
So I have done uh, speech language pathology and audiology. So I'll tell you in uh, terms of speech. Yeah. So basically, if your child uh, is uh, having a delay in speech or is not talking, suppose you have a three-year-old child who just says uh, one-word sentences. So that is when you have to be uh, aware or concerned that your child has a speech delay because by three years of age, your child should at least talk in uh, three to five-word sentences. And if your child is just speaking one-word sentences, that is when you know you have to come to a speech therapist. But the awareness among parents is not there. They would first go to a pediatrician. And then the pediatrician would recommend you to a speech therapist. So that is where we have to create the awareness that you need to be aware that your child is having certain difficulties and who do you need to approach. How does it work? Everyone with autism would necessarily have a speech impediment or no. vice versa? No. Most of them around uh, 40 to 60 children would have uh, communication difficulties. Out of 100. Yeah, so sometimes there are kids who would communicate at home, but they won't communicate around social settings. That is, they would communicate with their parents, but not with strangers. So that means we work on that aspect as well. That would be a social communication. So we'll uh, teach them how to speak around with different people, not just the people at home. And also how to refine their speech. And uh, when you talk about speech, uh, we talk about language as well. Speech is the way you speak. Language would be understanding what you're speaking. That is your receptive language. That is how you understand uh, the language. And expression is how you are able to express it. Yeah. So, uh, like ideally, how, how many sessions you have and uh, how long does it take to show results? So, uh, that's another thing, another challenge I would face. So basically, first I would assess the child and accordingly, uh, as a speech uh, therapist, I have, uh, I have the right to give the diagnosis of the child. So I would diagnose the child with so-and-so disorder. And of like course, what, what are the disorders? So, receptive and expressive language delay with autism or... Um, say social communicative uh, deficit or social communication uh, problem or speech sound disorders that is certain kids produce certain sounds differently like for example for lorry they'll say rawly that is the low sound gets substituted with the raw sound so we help in terms of that even stuttering as well we help with that as well so according to the assessment then we will uh, assess the child the severity and suppose uh, how how many days in a week does he does he need like four times or three times or two, or two times and accordingly you have to first counsel the parent very well how to go about with the things and then they have to you have to train them to do these things at home and uh, accordingly you will see the results but thing with speech therapy is it depends on different child each child is different so improvement of each child depends and it takes a few months to even a few years but the parents nowadays, the attitude they hold is that they want, you know, drastic improvement. But that is not how therapy works. And you can't pressurize your child. Each child is different. So you have to give the child the time to improve. So that is one challenge which each therapist faces. here. They would come for a month or two and they would not see, uh, you know, the changes. And they were like, my child is not changing. But you are not giving your child the time. And you are not doing the things what we teach you here at home. So you can't expect you know changes so it will take a time you have to be very patient with your child that's another important thing your profession gives you satisfaction uh, what's yes, its name yes. to start uh, with i believe you should Many of the NGO is the healing center there's no point yeah. in doing that the the, the, the you, most symbolic thing about uh, this ngo is our logo in our logo we have a brain you know and hands and a heart the, what happens is most people don't understand their own children we think children should be the way we want them to be. But children are in individuals. We cannot control their moods. We cannot control their thoughts. They will grow up seeing the environment around them. And what they see in the environment, they will observe. The first three years are very critical for the child's development. Because no one understands that, uh, you know, we as parents are their first teachers. What we do, they see, they absorb in their brains and the followers exactly. After that to change a child becomes difficult because the psychological nature of the child is developed basically in the first three years. 
so, so you started in March uh, 23 yeah I started uh, we started uh, I started late because starting an NGO in Goa is not very easy a lot of paperwork paperwork is not too much but it's extensive in the sense you have to run around getting things done and you okay. know how it is run around uh, yeah so go today to the office go tomorrow to that office and get this license that license and uh, of course financing is the most difficult yeah. part of the NGO yeah See, this NGO, I'm, the, I'm not a doctor, and yeah. I'm no one from the medical background. I'm basically from shipping background from the age of 19. And from that time till now, I'm sailing. So to start this was difficult because I had to know, see, I can talk to you about this today, we have uh, read extensively about this okay. topic, and I can talk about anything. It has been in your mind since which year? It has been in my mind since uh, I realized when, the thing is, when I came to Goa, I came to Goa in 2004. And my kid was born and it took me four or five years to diagnose that he had uh, autism. And uh, I was always feeling the centers are very less because that time it, there was only Setus. Okay. In Porvori, all the way, yeah, North Goa. Yeah. That time it was in Alti. Alti. When it started. So I used to go there and to go there was not feasible because I'm sailing, my wife cannot Correct. drive him all the way there. So I thought if one day I have some money, I'll start an NGO. Well, because if you take care of your child, if you do the proper therapies when they are young, I see. you can change their thought procedure. I see. You know, as you grow older, your thought procedure, it's very difficult. See, at my age, if you tell me to change something, it's going to be very difficult. I'll have to make a conscious effort, you know, but for a child, it's like a, a you know, a creeper. You can bend a creeper whichever way you want when it's growing in the initial stages. Once Good. it's had its roots firm in the ground, it's difficult to change. Then you have to break something, so which is damaging. So basically, it was that thought that put me like uh, there were no therapists, nothing. I wanted to have everything under one roof because my child suffered. I don't want the rest of the children to suffer. So this is how many children would there be in Goa, roughly going by percentages or whatever? By percentage, I think the last news uh, report said three, four hundred cases they are finding a month in Goa. Really? Yeah, in North and South Goa, in the, the district hospitals. So that is quite a large amount, but I think it should be at least hundred a month they are finding. See, autism is some, nothing new. Autism has always been. It was not diagnosed and no one took it seriously. And no one took it seriously. Even uh, most of the people thinking you know, that their children cannot study and they will hammer them. That's not the way. Because there is some issue. What is the issue? We are here to find out what the issue is. If we know what the issue is, we can help the child study. But beating the child or punishing the child is not the right way. And I don't think beating has got anyone to do, perform better in life. You know, Our parents used to do that, but that is old age tradition which is absolutely wrong. So the learning center is offering what kind of... Uh, the healing center. Yeah, healing the, center. The healing center, we have everything. You name it. We have uh, psychometric testing. We have OT. We have... OT? BT, occupational therapy. We okay. have speech therapy. We have behavior therapy. We have a psychologist. We have a doctor, a pediatrician also coming. And uh, we have... Uh, you name it, we have it. There's nothing what we don't know. I see. We have it at the back of our card, which I'll show you. So there is nothing what we don't cover. We can cover everything. What were the biggest challenges of being a new NGO? The biggest challenges of being a new NGO is that funding. If you have funds, see basically you, it's like this now. If you have enough of funds and you can offer a Correct. good salary, you'll get a lot of people. But right now I'm running it basically from what my salaries or what I'm working, whatever is coming from the NGO. Right. So that is the biggest challenge. Plus I cannot get support from anyone. CSR. Because of the CSR, the government has said for the first three years, we cannot do anything about that. So new organizations will not get CSR funding no, for the first, first three years? Three years. That's till they establish their credibility. Three years. Because I believe there is a lot of money laundering all that. Also, there are some which are set up with the intention of uh, siphoning off money. And to my so, I don't want to make money. Correct. I think I have achieved what I wanted in life and this is a totally different field for me. I, I don't make money from this. It's not that I'm doing this for money. Correct. I'm doing this for the good of the people. Yeah. I'm doing this for the good that I've got in life. It's in a way, giving a, back. Giving a, back. We, are, we are paying back the society. So I want to have a good team. That's why I say, now I might have problems financially, but once I'm stable and everything is running well, then I don't think money will be an issue for the therapist also. My intention is never to make money from this. You were talking something about the struggle of setting up an NGO. Can you enlighten us? What was the toughest part? How many forms were required? What See, permissions? Most, most of the uh, paperwork was done by Mural because I she's see. here and I'm not running around. But she, you know what happens? Another thing is transport in Goa. 
if you don't have your own transport in a place like this, it is very difficult yeah. to move. Like my therapist are coming, some are traveling nearly two hours to come here. Yeah. Like uh, Uttarsha is coming further down, I don't know which place also, somewhat near. Okay. It's, uh, so and this is out of town a little bit, no? I no, mean, but this is uh, convenient for us because this is very semi okay. compared to town, you know. And then okay. again, if I want to shift to town, then parking would yeah. be an issue. There were many other issues. And there are few people who Correct. are in town. Fair enough. So, and I think basically it's the where the places doesn't matter. It is how your staff performs True. and how you perform. True. How you take care of the children. If you see improvement in your child, people are sending their children to school which are miles away. I used to bring my child to school 23 kilometers away. From okay. Kavilosi to? To Kings. No? Kings. Yes. So it doesn't matter, the wow. place doesn't matter, but as long as your people are good and they see improvement in the child, yeah. and that is what we strive for. Attitude is important. Attitude is important, your work attitude is important. Yeah. How you look at the child, see we treat the child as our own. Correct. Most of the people who are opening centers, they want to make money. They don't care for the child, yeah. they are not bothered what you do. We also try to start, which we will do next week probably, with uh, training parents for parents intervention program. I have been after it, but I have, <coughs> sorry, got caught with a few other jobs. Yeah. But I'm planning to start it next week. And I have also spoken to Jodh's. So I started in Jodh's school also. Parent intervention in the sense? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, no problem. Parents intervention uh, so that we will guide the parents how to deal okay. with their children, help, help them, you know, progress in life. Training the parents. Train the parents to look after their children. Now see, we also have a helpline which no one is making use for. Number? The same number what she gave me. Okay. Uh, 930 931 three, uh, uh, What's the number? 930 931 three, 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 so, so that's fascinating. What's your end vision, Captain? Right now, and uh, my thing is to get these children in the open. Most of the children are keeping these. Uh, most of the parents are keeping these uh, children behind closed doors. Okay. I there is still a bit of shame and and uh, what shame? reluctance, uh, wrongly, if wrongly you placed. You can accept criminals and yeah. thieves and rapists in your society. Why can't we accept these children? Yeah, due to no fault. Due to no fault. Is it their fault that they are born? Yeah. It is the fault of the parents because the parents decided to have a child and if you are cannot look after the child, whatever it is after it is born, it is the fault of the yeah. parents. The parents don't have the right mindset. Or probably they don't know. Society doesn't have enough knowledge at the moment. Society doesn't. So most, of, most of the people, they don't have knowledge. They just want half-cooked stories on all yeah. these WhatsApp uh, messages which is junk. Yeah. You see, uh, when, a, when we have a child at home, a normal child, you take interest in him. Yeah. Now, when you have a special child, you must, you must at least take the same interest, not neglect the child, lock him behind closed doors, beat him for no reason, keep him in the dark. My thing is, I am planning to get now uh, teenagers who are capable of doing some job, see what you know work they can do, yeah. train them, keep them in the center, see how they are performing, and then put them for part-time jobs. And for this, I've already spoken to some people in on the coastal I see. because people know me in the coastal belt. Yes. Autistic children actually can be highly talented in some ways while they yes, yes, they like are top programmers and yes. things like that like you know yes, as yes. they have a they touch of all, autism. All of them are uh, having streaks of autism. I see. But the problem is when you accept your child and you train your child then your child will move ahead. No? Yeah. When you start neglecting the child thinking there is something wrong with the child then what happens. And we as parents we have a problem we overprotect our children. So when we overprotect what happens? You know, when you have a child and he grows up, you say, I you could have, he's getting afraid. Yeah. But when he's young and he tries to climb up, who puts the fear in him? You say, Are you put on? So it's on our terms. We are putting the fear in him, in him. And then when he grows up, we are telling him, You are uh, uh, done. That's not right. Now we should encourage our children, guide them. We must be friends to our children. You know? And last so, question your website is? My website is www.thehealingcenter.com. Dot com. Dot in, sorry. Dot, dot in. in. Dot in. The Healing Center dot in. Fine. Very nice. All the best. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for thanks, it. Uh, about slow learners. Slow learners are children who cannot cope up with because of the brain. It is not that, you know, all child have a different uh, brain growth, and yeah. different functions of the brain. Some of them, yeah. some of their, uh, some of the children, their brains cannot function to the peak. 
and they have uh, basically uh, problems with reading writing with things like dyslexia where the uh, where the alphabets they are confused with the alphabets so when they are basically confused with the alphabets when they go grow and progress they find it difficult to even study in class so but they, it's all relevant because see the top at the class and the bottom of the class will have a huge gap so how exactly do you know someone is a slow learner see a uh, guy who is a slow learner will have difficulty in studying any basic thing like some children all have, subjects no it is very selective like see if somebody has dyslexia he will have problems with maybe uh, words okay. but he might not have with numbers okay. because they will find it very confusing between the uh, alphabet like B and D or P something similar so if you cannot understand his brain is seeing something else like it's like uh, when you are color blind you know yeah. you cannot see the color and he doesn't understand he cannot see the color it's the same way he doesn't understand the difference so for that you have to have therapy. that's a big challenge as you that's say a big challenge. That's because a big challenge. because i had an eyesight problem and i didn't know that my eyesight was faulty yeah, till some teacher told me yes that's right she said like you know when you compare yourself to other students you know something is wrong with you but when you're young you don't have an idea but what happens like if there's a slow learner we tell okay we'll put in for tuition we'll put in here we'll put in there yeah but why can't we take him you know for a session and find out where is the problem so what would you do once you find out then we can work on his, on skills to help him develop I see. that department because he might be good in maths but not be good in reading right okay and there are many people who have this problem and not realize it till very late in life so their full growth of studies is hampered and the syllabus is such that they force feed us with 10 subjects so whether we want it or not you, where you use which you don't use anything algebra so geometry and our uh, see for me physics and we still use the whole yeah. basics so it's different but most of the topics uh, taught in school are generally went in your practical life i think the study structure should change you know like i think the moment is planning to do it where after 8th or 9th Okay, can join whichever stream you want. They were yeah, new education new policy education. plus even Parikar was talking about dropping, having having low level maths in that sense because right. not everyone needs your you know no trigonometry that. and calculus. No, no one needs all that. That is just a strain on the person, yeah. and you never use it in life later. So I think if the job, if the education is job oriented, how did you get involved in this subject? In what? <coughs> slow learning. <coughs> My brother was a slow learner, and you know, we were both just thought tougher, thought she can add this thing, that thing. End up, end up, and then I realized, like, why? How could he be a slow learner? And two of us, you know, I'm an average student here. I'm not a genius, but my sister is, uh, is sort of always in the ninety-five plus. And he had certain skills, other skills apart from school, academic. Yeah, yeah, he was very good in games. He was very good in many things. I see. But uh, they they should have focused on that aspect, not yeah. realizing this. But basically, if they had learned earlier, they knew that there is something called the slow learner. It's the problem with the brain, nothing to do with him, yeah. not with his attitude. Yeah, basically, he he's so not naughty or he's not stubborn or something of that sort. He wants to learn, but he cannot. He cannot. So we need to help him. Now, now see, when we get a cold, we try to take our local medicines. Then we go to the doctor, yeah. and then doctor gives some medicine to help you. Yeah. The same way we give some therapy to help them. So what is the therapy here? <coughs> here, in special ed, they help them to distinguish, to write, to you know. We we'll sit down in class. What happens? It's a full class. The teacher got no time for them, and there, what happens? She has to pay attention to fifty students in class. Yeah. Here is one on one, so we can first realize where the problem is. Once you know where the problem is. We have to accept that this is a problem. Like we as humans don't have acceptance. True. We don't want to accept that our child cannot learn. True. We say no. He has to. There so, is a lot of stigma for illnesses of the mind or or the senses. That is that is the you biggest know, problem. Physical illnesses, there's no problem. There's we will no, not blame you for it. As I said, no. Today, rapist is roaming freely in society. He can go around yeah. anywhere. And yet, a child who has some special issue yeah. due to birth, yeah, he is being uh, put down for no fault of his. So this is one thing I want to get out, and also I'm not going to end over here. I plan to once after a year or something, if this goes well, I'll open another center elsewhere. And by the end of three years, my intention is to provide free therapy once I get sponsored. So at least you know people now people need to have money to do a therapy, and it is quite expensive. Mm. So my intention is that, and eventually I want to place these children so they can work and they can have some self pride. Like in Bombay, there are many places where you have only autistic children serving the meals. I see. So at least they make some money. They have some self pride that they are doing something. I think Karita had tried with uh, deaf mutes or something like that. Probably. Uh, yeah. 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 Bangalore. Bangalore. I see. So that is what uh, is my intention. 
my intention is to bring them out and try to mix them with normal society. I know maybe I started this late, but uh, I hope I live long enough to see. No, don't worry. With a purpose like this, you will. <laughs> if you have a why, you can find any how. Yes, yes. All the best. Thanks, thanks.